Hey everybody, welcome back to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and in this video I want to show you a little clip uh, that comes from some of our monthly content over at my mixing membership website mixingmadeeasy.net. You'll see an image on the screen. You can click the link in the description box below. Um, this comes from the June 20. 22 content. I just got through wrapping it up for the students. And as I was uh, recording the last section of the content that month, there's about a five or an eight minute rant there that I gave some really good tips and some just good teachable moments and things uh, that I communicate to my students. And I wanted to share with all of you, because if you're not a member of MixingMadeEasy.net and you really want to learn the craft of mixing in a non-technical way so you can make your music sound the best it possibly can be, all in the box, all with plugins, you really want to consider checking out MixingMadeEasy.net. And in this little clip you're about to see, these are some of the things that I teach every single month. We do a different style of music every single month. We use different DAWs every month. I use different sets of plugins every month. Everything from stock plugins to third-party plugins to show that you can get a great mix regardless of what tools that you have on your computer. Every month you're going to get anywhere from three to six hours worth of video training, audio files, and you're going to follow along with me. Mix the song yourself. We have a monthly mixing contest as well as access to a private user community, our forum, with a lot of great members where you can post up your mixes and people on, uh, as well as myself can give you mix feedback and mix critique. So you get an enormous amount of training with a really cool community where we all support each other to get better at the craft of mixing and it's perfect for people at any experience level at any experience level and so i want you to check out mixingmadeeasy.net click the link in the description box below there'll also be a link there for a special offer that you can get a discount uh, right now we only open up enrollment twice a calendar year but when i get little video clips like this and i found something that was really cool and i want to share it with you um, I'm going to open up the membership for a few days so you guys can check it out. And if for some reason, depending on when you're watching this video, if you go to the website and membership is closed, there is a place to put your email address so you'll be notified when membership opens. Um, so I encourage you to check out mixingmadeeasy.net. So watch this clip. You'll get kind of an idea of what we teach and what I teach every single month and how I go into a lot of detail with my students so they get the most out of their membership and out of their training. So thanks so much. I really do appreciate your time and I hope you enjoy watching a little bit of behind the curtain, behind the scenes at mixingmadeeasy.net. So that's our saturation thing. So we used all, well, we didn't use all the plugins that I needed to use or all the compre you know, I said I can have two upboard compressors, two EQs, tape machine and saturation. We used everything except we did not use one of our compressors. Oops, right? Where is this? There we go. We didn't use one of our compressors. We still have a compressor that's open to us. We only used the LA-2A on the piano. We only used the compressor on the Vision Channel strips, right? Yeah, and we use our API 2500, but you, I said that could be in addition. So again, just because I have an extra plugin that I can use, or you know, I even have an extra outboard EQ that I can use on the master bus, I'm not using it, I don't need it. So here's another lesson. Just because you have the tools, it doesn't mean you need to use them on every mix. Just because you have all your plugins, it doesn't need to doesn't mean you need to use them on every mix. Do this stuff with a purpose. We've talked about that in the coaching call as well, where I said just because you know don't over don't compress the snot out of something just because you have a track and you think you need to throw a compressor on it. No, if it doesn't need it, don't use it. Unless you are going and you you're listening to something, you go I need to compress because. And always ask yourself that, right? On every single processing, every compressor, every EQ, every saturator, every everything. If you're going on and throwing plugins on the track, say to yourself, I'm putting this plugin on this track because blank, 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 blank. If you can't answer what the blank, 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 blank is, and you can't say, because I want more low end in the kick drum, for example, like what we did on the API, right? On the EQ, on the drum, where was it? On the drum bus. Because we, I said, I want a little bit, I want to take a little bit of mids out and I want a little bit more thump on the kick primarily. And then I also tweaked in the top end. But before I put that EQ on there or any EQ on there, I said, I'm putting an EQ on the drum bus because blank, blank, blank. So I want you to start asking yourself that question every single time you put a plugin on a track. 
you know, I know we're using our channel strip as our main desk and you can use whatever one you want. We're just using API this time around, but, and that's fine. But beyond that, or I'm EQing on my channel strip, I'm EQing this snare because blank, 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 blank. Why are you doing it? Do it with a purpose. Because I hear a lot of times where people just throw plugins on stuff because you have them and you think you need to because you see me do it. So you just throw them on there. I try to at least tell you what we're doing and why, right? So I want you to start thinking about that. If you don't think about that already, write it down. You should have on the computer screen in front of you, a little sticky note <laughs> taped to your monitor. And there should be a couple of things that you write down, right? Some of these little finer notes to ask yourself, write that down, big star next to it. Processing with a purpose. Ask myself why. Maybe that's one of the things you write down, right? Make sure maybe you write down something like from this month, what are lessons learned? Controlled compression, right? We're just using the compressors on the channel strip to give it the channel strip flavor to kind of glue it all together and we're only taming the peaks. You notice in this track, we didn't use any parallel compression. Why it doesn't need it. It already rocks. What's parallel compression going to do to this? I mean, there are other videos and other months where I do parallel compression. You've seen me do it a million times. And there are YouTube videos from the past where I say I do it on almost every single mix. And that's true. That's true. But in a mix like this, it doesn't need it. Now you could add it. But again, parallel compression, you're adding a lot more compression now to the track. Does it need it? Right? So... I hope you get the point. Write down these little key things for you to remember. You know, for some of you, don't over compress. Write that down because I hear it every single mixing call. And I'll say, how come that sounds like it's compressed? How come I hear the saturator plugin that you used or whatever it was? You know what I mean? Right? Or last month, again, depending on, we did the Evo coaching call, a lot of and in the vocal. And I hear that every single month when we have vocals, we don't have one here. So write that down, check your DSing, check your consonants, right? I don't want to hear in every single line like we did last month. Almost every mix had that with the exception of one or two. Almost every mix we listened to had way too many in the vocal, right? Details, write that down, check that stuff, okay? I think that's a good idea. You should write these little things down. Write yourself a little process, write yourself things to remember. So you, you get a, not only a, you know, a mix that sounds good, but a mix that feels good. We talk about that a lot. There's a difference between a mix that sounds good and a mix that kind of feels disjointed and it sounds good, but maybe it feels a little disjointed as opposed to a mix that sounds glued together and it sounds and it feels right. That's what you're, we're striving for here, right? We're not just striving for, can you balance everything? Of course you need to be able to do that, right? But we're also talking about, does the mix feel good and not just sound good? And a lot of that has to do with the little subtle moves and the kind of plugins you're using to some degree, but the little subtle moves, like on the, on the saturator, you know, not hitting it too hard. On the reverb, how it just kind of pushes and lifts out a little bit on the fame, right? Well, I'm not drowning in reverb. I don't hear the drums going, sounding like they're in a wind tunnel a mile away and everything else is right up front. We've had those issues in coaching calls. Stay away from the room reverbs. Get yourself a nice room emulation plugin because that, as you heard, can just give the whole track a little bit of a lift and push it out and it sounds natural. It feels good. That's the difference. Okay. All of that stuff is way more important in the end, then all the crazy automation moves. I mean, I know some of you email me, go do a lot of auto. I got automation everywhere, automation everywhere. Great. How can they say, how come you don't do a lot of automation? It's not that I don't. I, and when I mix for clients, there's a ton of automation in my mixes. But in this teaching, most of what I hear coming back, we're not worried about automation. We're still worried about, can I hear the lead vocal through the whole song, right? Can I not hear that in the whole song? Right? Can we not pan things so wide so we have the guitars overtaking the vocal in some mixes? Can we get it so I don't hear all the distortion or the compressors are hitting too hard? All of that comes long before you consider, well, we got to do automation because, you know, I watched my engineer, my favorite engineers on YouTube, and they're doing automation. Automation is the very last thing you do when you have a mix that's set up and sounds right. 
And here's the thing about automation, then we'll get off this video and get out of this month here. And while I'm on a rant, I'm just going to share it with you because I like to do that for you guys. I want you to get the most out of this stuff. Here's the thing about automation. You should be able to listen to a track with no automation and not have to touch a single fader and everything ought to sit right. Meaning you should be able to hear everything, everything, nothing should stick out. It should sound and feel good without touching anything. No automation, no fader moves, nothing. When you have that balance set like that, where you go, all right, this mix could almost be, it's ready. It doesn't need automation. Now the automation I'm gonna use, I'm gonna to use to give a little bit of excitement, a little bit of movement to the music. Subtle. If you hear the automation and it's so obvious, it's too much, just like everything else, right? So for automation people out there, unless we get past all the other stuff, don't worry about automation. Worry about getting the track that sound right, sit right, feel right, subtlety, and get the details down. Then worry about automating the tracks, okay? We can't put the cart before the horse, right? 